All right, boys, I'm back with another video. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a data store. Um, I don't really do tutorials, but today I got bored, so I'll make one. If you guys have not already, make sure to subscribe and like the video. We are trying to pass Eric in a thousand subs, and honestly, we've grown like a lot. So thank you guys so much for the support on that. So let's get right into the video. Before you do anything, make sure your security, you have Enable Studio Access to API Services, make sure you have that on. Basically what you want to start off doing is you want to make a script called Data Store, obviously, because that's just obvious. So this will be the easiest way to make it. This is how I make it for all my games. Um, fully customizable and actually really easy to use. What I'm going to do in this script, I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to insert a folder. I'm going to rename that to whatever the folder you want to be named in the player to be called. So for example, most games do leader stats. That's what the thing does in the corner. You have to name it leader stats. So I'll do that and I'll do a number value. I'll do two number values. I'll do cash and let's do gems. First what we're gonna get is the data store service. So we're gonna do local DS equals game, call and get service, data store service. Actually, I'm gonna make this a lot easier to read. So data store service, and then I'm gonna do local my data store equals data store service colon get data store, and this is the key. Now you don't have to do this. You can make this whatever key you want. It's just a string value like that. You can do whatever. But what I like to do is have a number value in here called data version. So I can easily reset stats by changing this number to whatever it has not been changed to before. I'm going to do data and then dot dot script dot data version dot value. So now that we've got that out of the way, what we are going to do is create a create a player added event. So what that'll do is when the player joins, this function will run. So what we gotta do now is get everything from inside of this data store script. And how we're gonna do that is a for loop. We're gonna loop through all of its children. So let's do for blank, comma, folder in pairs, script, colon, get children do. What we're gonna do is check if it's not, or if folder, colon, is a, folder then we're gonna do folder clone clone dot parent equals player what should show up is obviously the leader stats right here let's say you want different folders like I don't know pet inventory or something with different values like name this like pet one or something so we do that click play now it won't show up in this corner because it's not called leader stats. The only thing that would show up in the corner is anything under the folder leader stats. But we go to our player, we see the pet inventory folder is here. Click it, pet one is there. Leader stats, all that's there. Now you might be wondering if you've tried or tested it, why doesn't it save? Well, because we haven't used data store service literally at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do another for loop in a for loop, which is not necessarily great, but it's whatever. So I'm gonna do for blank underscore item in pairs. We're gonna do folder colon get children do. And in here, item dot value equals item dot value. Oops, item dot value. We need to set up a few things before we actually do anything with the data. So before this for loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a local data is equal to ds or data store my data store colon get async and then you're gonna put in the key and we have to make a key so the key is something that is relative to the player so every player gets their own key so what you want to do to that is get their user ID to essentially make sure that they can't change it. You can't change your user ID on Roblox, but you can change your name. That's why you don't want to use username or display name because they're easily changeable. So you can do player.userid dot dot and then whatever you want. So you can do like data or literally whatever. So there's that. Now that we have the data and the key, what we're gonna do right under this for loop for the item, we're gonna do if data then, so we can check if the player has data, 
I'm going to do item.value equals data, and then you get the item. So you're going to do item.name, because if you run item, it'll send through an instance, and data stores don't take instances, they take strings, and item.name will return a string. So then else, you can put item.value equals item.value, and then warn that there is no data. There is no data. There we go. So this will get the item and take it from the data store and load it. What we have to make now is saving. So what we're going to start off doing is a local function that is called create underscore table. It could be literally named anything. It doesn't matter. I just name it that for whatever. What we're going to do is local stats is equal to a table. Oh, we don't want stats because that's an inbuilt function. Let's do player underscore stats. So we go to a table. So now what we got to do is we have to get the folders that we want to load. So what we're going to do is for blank comma folder in pairs script oops script colon get children do. And we're going to do the same thing. A folder is a folder. Then so now we know it's a folder and now we've got the folder. So now what we want to do is for we want to get the stats and essentially put them into this player stats table. So what I'm going to do for underscore comma stat in pairs. We're going to do player colon find first child folder dot name. Now what this is going to do is it's going to get the stats from the player and not from the instances that are created when the game is loaded. Now what we're going to do is we're going to append the stat by doing by giving the table name and then adding a bracket and doing stat dot name. Again, it has to be a string because it won't take instances, tables don't take instances, or they can, but for this it's better to do strings. And I'm going to do stat dot value, and that is it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to return the function so we can use it later. Player stats. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a player removing event. So game dot players player removing when connect function player. This will get the removing player of course. And so now we're going to get the player stats. But you might be thinking, well, we created them here. How are we going to get them? from here to here. That's why we return the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to do local player stats is equal to create table and then we send to the player. So now we have the player stats folder and what we're going to do is we're going to save it which is actually really easy. So we're going to do local s comma error equals pcall function. What a pcall function does is it makes it makes it to where the script won't break if something is returned as nil and s comma error basically giving two variables these are two different instances if this p call were to success or send through correctly then it'll return this variable right here s that can be named literally anything success error but error is already taken so we don't want that so now what we're going to do is we're going to do local key okay basically just copy this key variable from here, put it into here. There you go. Now do your my data store colon set async. What this does is it will set the async of the key that is passed and then the stats that are thrown through. So which is always a table and it should always be a table. If it's just one instance then that is not recommended. It is better to put them in a table and save them as a table. That is literally it. That will save it. But now I want to make sure that it will work. So what I'm going to do is do an if success print whoops, save data correctly. Now you don't have to do this because obviously it's just that one little check and else I'm going to warn the error. So here's the script. You can pause and read, do whatever you want. So, 
Okay, we already have a problem here. Services service dot data store invalid argument number one to pairs table expected got instance. We forgot to do colon get children right here. And what we should see is I have 300 cash, and I do not. So pull up the console and I see nothing, nothing at all. All right, boys, I figured it out. It was basically because it was loading to the wrong folder. Um, it was going to this folder right here instead of the folder in the player. So now, this is the final code for the entire data store here. Basically, we have, we get the values, we get the data stores, we get the service itself. We do a player added function that will run when the player is added. We create a key and some data for them. And we check for everything in the script. So for these children right here, we will check if they're a folder, which if they are, then it will clone the folder. It will put that folder in the player. And then from there, it will check for every item in the folder that is inside the player. And then from there, we go from for every item inside the folders, it will check if there is data, and then it will set that item. So let's say cash, we'll set the value to the data and then it'll check for the cache. And if there's no data, then they're warn that there's no data. That is for loading. Now for saving, what I did was I created a, we created a function that will return this table right here. And inside the table is every instance in here and their values. At the very, very end for the saving function itself, we create the table for the player and we set the key or we set the stats with the key, which is then retrieved up here when it is loaded. So now let me demonstrate. So I will change this data version to something like literally anything else to what it has not been. It will print these datas here um, since there is no data. You don't have to run any of the prints. So they are optional. I just, I like them to make sure that I'm doing it good. And what I will do is I will set my cache to like, let's say a hundred gems to like 25 and I will set my pet one to be a plushie. And I will come back, and as you can see, I've got pet inventory, it's a plushie. My layer stats are both the correct values, and if I click stop and then rejoin the game, what I should get is 100 cash, 25 gems, and the plushie pet inventory. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to subscribe and like. And if you guys want to see more tutorials, then of course, tell me in the comments below because I don't know. I don't know if I explained well or not. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.